Under a shining Florida sky, the World Championship of Professional Football, known to some as the Super Bowl, took place in Miami's Orange Bowl. After 188 hard-fought football games, only this single big one remained. Amid the incredible hoopla and attention this contest receives were two football teams trying mightily to retain concentration on the business at hand. The American Conference representative, the Pittsburgh Steelers, seemed loose and confident, a feeling born from last year's success in Super Bowl IX. Their opponents, the Dallas Cowboys, were a bit more grim, an understandable attitude that befits the Cinderella status that has been bestowed upon them as they made their way to the top of the football heap in the National Conference. So the Dallas Cowboys, to the surprise of almost everyone, including themselves, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, to the surprise of absolutely no one, meet to decide the best in pro football in the NFL Game of the Week, Super Bowl number 10. The game's first play, the opening kickoff, set the tempo for the entire afternoon as Dallas sprung a reverse on the return. Tom Henderson, number 56, a rookie who had taken a similar play 97 yards against St. Louis during the regular season, this time went 53 yards to give the Cowboys the ball on the Pittsburgh 44. Despite this stunning beginning, Dallas couldn't move the football on their first offensive series and in fact nearly turned the ball over to Pittsburgh. Center John Fitzgerald, number 62, recovered Roger Staubach's fumble. Pittsburgh, too, couldn't move on their initial series, and here occurred the first big break of Super Bowl X. Punter Bobby Walden dropped the center snap. The Cowboys converged to drop him, and Dallas had the football again, this time on Pittsburgh's 29. Last year in Super Bowl IX, Pittsburgh had a lot of trouble with all phases of their kicking game. Walden had a punt block for a touchdown and Roy Girella missed two field goals. So it looked like a repeat performance for the Steelers. On the very next play after Walden's fumble, number 58, middle linebacker Jack Lambert moved to his right, but then was suckered back to the left on Staubach's fine fake to Preston Pearson. Ali Roger passed right to Lambert's vacated spot and receiver Drew Pearson outran all defenders for an easy touchdown. Dallas had drawn first blood and led seven to nothing early in the first quarter. But these were the Pittsburgh Steelers Dallas was playing and like the champions they are, they came right back. Lynn Swan's sensational catch was the catalyst in this touchdown drive. And as we view it again, notice the tremendous body control that enabled the flying swan to stay inbound. The doomsday defense dug in at their own 16, but were unable to stop the inevitable. Pittsburgh's touchdown had come on a short rollout pass from Terry Bradshaw to Randy Grossman, a second-string tight end from Temple University, known for his sure-handed catching ability. Only a lack of blocking ability stands in the way of first-string status for the glue-fingered Grossman.
Pittsburgh had moved 67 yards in eight plays to tie the game at seven. With five minutes remaining in the first quarter, the Cowboys began to drive on their own. On the arm of Staubach and the legs of Doug Dennison and number 44, Robert Newhouse, the Cowboys throw to the Steeler 18. But here a subtle but sure change in the tempo of the game took place. The feared and famed steel curtain defense dug in and began to play with the awesome ferocity for which they are known. Number 58, Jack Lambert's wicked tackle of ex-teammate Preston Pearson signaled this not-so-subtle change of momentum. The super-aggressive middle linebacker played like a man possessed for the rest of the game, and it was his former teammate Pearson who bore the brunt of his fury. As the second quarter began with Dallas on Pittsburgh's 14, safety Glenn Edwards missed a golden opportunity to go coast-to-coast. Fourth down, Tom Landry decided to go for the three points, and Tony Frisch's field goal gave it to him as Dallas went back in front 10 to 7. As they had done in the first period after the Cowboys' touchdown, Pittsburgh came roaring right back. John Stallworth's fine catch was not marred by a fumble for the ball came loose after the whistle. The Steelers were in cowboy territory again. On fourth and two, Bradshaw surprised by going to the air, but his perfect pass to Franco Harris was dropped. The man who intimidated Harris out of the catch was number 43, Cliff Harris, who was a defensive standout all day long for Dallas. By now, what was an explosive game had turned into a defensive slugfest, with Pittsburgh getting the best of it. Old buddy Pearson seemed to be an inviting target, and although he caught five passes today, the ex stealer was limited to merely 14 yards on the ground. As the half wore on, Staubach found himself the victim of an increasingly ferocious pass rush, led by L.C. Greenwood, Ernie Holmes, and Dwight White. The most celebrated member of the Steel Curtain defense, Mean Joe Green, playing injured was not a factor in the game and was removed after the first half. After a Dallas punt put Pittsburgh on their own six, Bradshaw and Lynn Swan again teamed up for a sensational play. Another look at Lynn Swan's incredible catch shows that he was well covered by number 46 cornerback Mark Washington, who couldn't overcome Swan's acrobatics. With 
26 seconds remaining in the first half of this 10th Super Bowl, Pittsburgh went for a field goal that would tie the game. But Roy Girella, who had suffered rib damage while making a tackle on the opening kickoff, missed from in close. As in Super Bowl IX the year before, Pittsburgh's kicking game was hurting them badly as the half ended with the Cowboys still ahead, 10 to seven. On the Cowboys' first possession of the second half, Staubach was guilty of the very crime the Dallas shotgun is supposed to prevent. The formation is designed to help Staubach locate secondary receivers, but he never looked anywhere except at his primary receiver on this one, and J.T. Thomas read Staubach's eyes and stole his pass. Thomas returned to the Dallas 25. It was just the type of big play defense that Pittsburgh thrives on. But the Steelers went away hungry this time as Bradshaw's third down pass was too high even for the high-flying Lynn Swan, who had inside position on Mark Washington. Though they had failed to fully capitalize on the turnover, the Pittsburgh offense had made the first move in turning Super Bowl X around. For their failure to get the touchdown meant a 33-yard Roy Girella field goal attempt. And the ensuing action when he missed lit a fire in the Steeler boilers and further advanced Pittsburgh's cause. Cowboy defensive back Cliff Harris, number 43, had unknowingly aided the Steelers by his actions after Jarella had missed his short field goal pop. The Steelers are an emotional team that takes care of its own. And looking at the play from our end zone camera, we can see Jack Lambert did just that. Said Lambert after the game, I felt Harris' actions weren't necessary. I felt we weren't going to be intimidated, so I grabbed him and threw him down. When the Cowboys took over a psyched up Lambert and his anger touched teammates, continued to throw people down. Further Lambert quote, we were intimidated in the first half and the Pittsburgh Steelers are not supposed to be intimidated. Indeed, they were not in the second half and they were ready for anything Dallas threw at them. Though the Dallas offense was ineffective, their defense was playing well and the Cowboys carried their 10-7 lead into the fourth quarter. Then on the Steelers' first play of the quarter, the Cowboy defense chased Bradshaw out of the pocket. But Bradshaw made a great throw to Franco Harris, who almost turned it into a big, big play. Harris, however, stepped on the sideline after his catch. The Steelers did not get the touchdown and could move no farther. But Harris' 26-yard reception gave Pittsburgh better field position from which to punt. Golden Richard shaded his eyes from the sinking Miami sun. But all he saw was a Bobby Walden boomer that drove him 20 yards back and was the beginning of the end for the Cowboys. The Steeler punt coverage team strung out Richard's escape route, and Walden with his big kick had a tone for his earlier fumble, for the Cowboys were inside their own 20, and when the steel curtain came down on Staubach, 
Dallas was in a hole. Forced to punt from their own end zone, the Steelers went for the big play. Pittsburgh bomb squatters Dave Brown, number 36 and number 46, Reggie Harrison, ganged up on Roland Wolsey, number 45. Wolsey took Brown and Harrison was in free. Harrison spiked the ball out of the end zone for a safety, making the score 10-9 Dallas. But it did much more, for Harrison had literally nearly eaten the ball. I heard a boom and fell to shot. It cut my tongue. I never did see the ball, said Harrison. Teammate Ernie Holmes said, what's a little thing like a cut tongue? With the money he's going to make, he can buy himself a gold one. That did it for us, said Lambert. And it did, for the Steelers made a five-point play out of it, advancing the subsequent free kick into field goal range at a 12-10 lead. The Sharks of the Steelers' defense must have really smelled Harrison's blood. For on Dallas' first play after falling behind for the first time, Mike Wagner streaked in and stole Staubach's pass. Wagner carried to the Dallas 7, but the Cowboys refused to fold and forced the Steelers to settle for a field goal and a 15-10 lead. Dallas was unable to move on their next possession, but they did force Pittsburgh into a third and four when Terry Bradshaw struck for one of the greatest plays in Super Bowl history. Lynn Swan had beaten Mark Washington again, and looking at the play from the end zone reveals why. Washington was in single coverage for number 43, Cliff Harris, had safety blitzed. He was chopped down by Rocky Blyer. His blitz unsuccessful, the Dallas secondary weakened. Bradshaw's pass to Super Bowl X most valuable player, Lynn Swan, had traveled 60 yards in the air and hit him right in the hands. The pass is even more remarkable when Bradshaw is isolated. Stepping up in the pocket, Bradshaw avoided D.D. Lewis, number 50, who had also blitzed, then threw that perfect 60-yard pass despite Larry Cole's brutal hit. Bradshaw suffered a concussion on the play and would not return. And with a fourth and final look at the play, we can see why Bradshaw claimed he never saw the catch. Bradshaw is looking in the right direction, but the force of Cole's blow knocked the thought right out of his head. Cole certainly saw it, for the dejection registered in his mind. The dejection of being 11 points down with three minutes to go. But Dallas did not get to Super Bowl X by laying down. They had pulled out a last-second miracle to beat Minnesota, and the game was not over yet. Staubach's touchdown pass to Percy Howard came with a minute 48 still to play. The Dallas defense held, using up all their timeouts. And the Cowboys got the ball back just 26 seconds later, 60 yards away from another miracle with 82 seconds left. After two first downs, Staubach saved the Cowboys when he recovered a bad center snap and had the presence of mind to throw a pass. It was incomplete, but stopped the clock, something the Cowboys could not have done having no timeouts left. Another incompletion left three seconds on the clock, and 80,000 fans who had witnessed by far the most exciting of all the Super Bowls watched as Super Bowl X came down to one last play. Starbuck's desperate heave for miracle worker Drew Pearson was intercepted by Glenn Edwards, 
And when he touched down, the ball safely in his grasp, the Steelers were world champions for the second year in a row. With their 21-17 victory in Super Bowl X, the Steelers joined the Green Bay Packers and Miami Dolphins as the only back-to-back -back winners of the Super Bowl. It's a remarkable achievement, joining these two legendary teams. But the Dallas Cowboys need not walk away with heads held low. What they accomplished in 1975 is one of the great stories in pro football history. Supposedly in a rebuilding year with 12 rookies on the team, Dallas made the playoffs and became the first wild card playoff team ever to reach the season's final Sunday. That they lost cannot tarnish a golden season. They lost to a great football team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, victorious in Super Bowl X and champions of the National Football League for the second consecutive season.